Hi everyone, my name is Cornelia Summer and I'm a professional bassoonist, arranger, and educator. I made this tutorial to help musicians who are interested in creating a great multi-track recording from home. I'll take you through the process of getting a great sound with your setup, from making a click track to your final recording, all with free and simple software. This tutorial is focused on sound, but with my method, you'll easily be able to incorporate video into your project as well. Like many musicians, I didn't have much experience with multi-track recording before March of 2020. I figured out a streamlined six-step process that is simple, efficient, and effective. Getting a great sound with all the parts you recorded while aligned is absolutely possible for any musician with a phone and a computer. I encourage you to embrace the newness of this process and remember that it takes a different set of skills than live performance. For me, the new skills have been about half related to how I play and practice and half related to learning new technology. The tech side of things will be much easier if you start the process in the practice room. The example piece I'll show during this tutorial is a bassoon quartet, but of course this works for any array of instruments. This tutorial will give you several options for free software, but I'll only demonstrate one option for each step of my process. Any new software will take time to learn, and I'm not going to go into specifics in this tutorial because everybody will have their own preference for which software they're using. When you download a program, there will usually be some kind of minimal tutorial built in when you first open it. I recommend doing that and then Googling any questions as they arise and maybe watching other YouTube tutorials. I will show you the steps I take and what you should aim for with whatever program you're using. And all the software I mentioned will be linked in the description below. Now I'll tell you the six steps for great multi-track recordings. The basic steps in my process are, number one, study and practice your piece to form an interpretation. Number two, create a click track using music notation software. Number three, practice all parts with the click track for at least a week. Number four, experiment with mic placement and make note of the setup you decide on. Number five, record. And finally, number six, combine the parts and make edits using audio editing software. Let's start with step one forming an interpretation. This part of the process is the most sim similar to preparing for an in-person solo performance. The main difference is that you must follow all your interpretive decisions exactly when you record, no room for a spur of the moment change. As you study and practice your piece, form your opinions about dynamics, shaping, articulation, tempo, and rubato. Once you decide on those musical parameters, make sure that you notate them clearly into all the parts. The piece that I'll use as an example throughout this tutorial is my bassoon quartet arrangement of a chanson by Renaissance composer Orlando de Lassus. I formed my interpretation by playing through the parts, analyzing the text of the original song, and finding a recording I love that I can emulate. Once I made some musical decisions, I notated them into all four parts. On to step two, creating a click track. A click track is more than just a metronome. By creating your own click track using music notation software, you can include all those musical decisions you made in step one. You'll create a click track using the software and then export an audio file that you'll listen to as you record. I use Finale because I do a lot of arranging, but free options for music notation software include MuseScore and NoteFlight, linked below. Whatever program you're using, you'll start by indicating instrumentation, time signature, key, and starting tempo. You'll know most of those from the interpretive work you did in step one. For instrumentation, I'd recommend experimenting with the unpitched percussion sounds to find the sound that you like the best. Personally, I like claves or woodblock. And my initial tempo for this piece is 72. Now you're ready to start entering notes. First, decide how many measures of click you are including before the piece starts. I usually include two to four, depending on the tempo. Enough time to get the tempo in your ears and your instrument ready to play. Make a note of your choice, but it will probably be easier to add those measures last so that the measure numbers in the piece correspond to the measure numbers on the screen as you're creating the click track. The main choice you have to make is how often you want to hear a click. My recommendation is something moderate. You'll be overwhelmed by sound if you include a lot of subdivisions of the beat, but you want to make sure you hear the beat often enough to stay super accurate. For this piece, I decided that a quarter note subdivision was a good moderate choice. Next, you just need to enter all the clicks. This can be tedious, so I recommend using copy and paste. 
and just make sure that you end up with the right number of measures total. Okay, I've entered all my clicks, so now let's address tempo changes versus rubato. If you want several measures to be faster or slower, or the music enters an entirely new section that's faster or slower, you should adjust the tempo by changing the metronome marking, as I've done here and here. If you want to have rubato within a measure, for example, placing a beat, you should add a short rest in the spot where you want to take time, as I've done here. I usually use 16th or 32nd note rests depending on the tempo. Note that you will have to change the time signature to make this work. So I was in cut time, so I needed to add a 1 16 to that time signature. Just remember to also change the time signature back after that measure is over. You might be tempted to add a ritardando or a cellarando. That's usually less effective because you don't have control over the rate of slowing down or speeding up. Using the two techniques I just showed you will give you much more control over the tempo changes in rubato. And finally, don't forget to add in your measures of click at the beginning before the piece actually starts. We've addressed how you'll get all the parts to line up rhythmically, but what about making sure your parts are in tune with each other? If your piece doesn't have piano in it or any other fixed pitch instrument, you should also consider adding a drone to your click track so that you have a reference for pitch. Find a sound in your music notation software that is sustained and doesn't have vibrato. I like to use synth or organ. Then add your reference pitches. For most tonal music, it works well to simply input the pitches of the lowest part in your piece. You might find you need to make small adjustments to this based on the specifics of your piece, but it's at least a good starting point. I also advise you to use the longest note values possible. For example, if in this measure it had been four quarter note A's in a row, you should change that to one long whole note. That way you'll clearly be depending on the click for the rhythm and the drone for the pitch. You'll also need to experiment with balance between the click and the drone. I found that if I marked the drone up to fortissimo, it got the right balance between the synth sound and the clave sound. The final step is to export your click track as an audio file. Listen to the whole thing to make sure it's accurate and then put that audio file on a device that you can access easily in the practice room. Step three is practicing with the click track. Once you have a click track, it's time to practice all the parts with it. I suggest daily practice for at least a week so that you can get to the point where you can play through each part completely accurately in terms of timing and your other musical ideas. Use the headphones that you plan to use for the recording. Wired headphones are preferable because Bluetooth headphones often have unnoticeable connection issues that will only become apparent when your parts don't align. This kind of playing will feel unnatural at first, but remember that the goal is to make it sound as natural as possible. One thing to watch out for is dynamics. When you're playing by yourself, it can be hard to remember to play as soft or as loud as you actually need to when all the parts are combined. Make sure to practice those extreme dynamics to ensure your final recording is balanced properly. If you find any spots in your click track that you just can't get right or that didn't turn out the way you hoped, go back to your music notation file and make adjustments. It's unusual to make a perfect first click track for any piece you work on. Just remember that you'll still need plenty of time to practice adjusting to the new track. Step four is finding the right microphone placement. Now we need to talk about the physical equipment you're, you're using to record. Is this a video project? If so, is your video device also functioning as your audio device? In other words, does your camera have a built-in microphone that you'll be using for the audio? An example of such a device would be a phone. If so, you'll need to find a spot that the camera is flattering both visually and the microphone is picking up a good sound. You'll have somewhat limited options, but I encourage you to try a few different spots and pick the sound you like best. If you have a microphone or audio device that's separate from your camera, or if you don't need video for the project at all, you can put the mic anywhere. Do some short trial recordings with a mic in different places or in different rooms and with you in different places. Once you find a satisfactory mic placement, see if your audio device allows you to control the gain. If not, you can ignore this, but if you do have control over it, you'll need to set the gain level. I don't recommend using automatic gain because it will level out any dynamic contrast you do. You wanna set it at a level that is high enough that the loudest sound you can play almost creates clipping, which means it's too loud for the mic to handle, but it doesn't. If you're not sure what I mean by this, experiment with short trial recordings to find the right level. 
Finally, make sure that once you find your ideal recording setup and gain level, you write it down and even mark the exact place where you and the microphone need to be for recording. Step five, record. Now for the fun part, it's time to record. You've set yourself up for success by getting super comfortable playing with a click track and finding your ideal recording setup. As you're recording, periodically check in to make sure all the tech is functioning properly. A big one is making sure that you're not going to run out of battery on any of your devices. Ideally, you should try to record all the parts in one session if it won't make you too fatigued, because you want to make sure that the mic is in exactly the same place for all the different parts you're recording. I recommend recording at least two full takes of every part so you have options when you start combining them. At the beginning of each take, say the take number, which part you're recording, and the file name, if applicable. It's also helpful to write that information down and make notes about which takes you thought were the best. Some people like to add parts they've already to recorded to the click track to listen to as they record other parts. I personally find it easier not to do that because I can play more accurately when I'm only listening to one thing, the click track that I've spent time practicing with. However, I recommend that you try it both ways to see which works better for you. During your recording session, set aside more time than you need and remember to give yourself breaks between takes. Recording can be a stressful process, but with proper pre preparation, it will go smoothly. Once you're done recording, step six is combining the parts. Finally, you'll get to combine and edit the parts with an audio editing software. I use Audacity, uh, Reaper is another free option, and GarageBand is great if you have a Mac. If your recording device is a combo of video and audio, the first step is to separate those so you're working with audio files. I've linked a website below called Online Audio Converter that can do that for you easily. And now I'll show you my essential steps for editing using Audacity lining up the parts, checking for problem spots, adjusting balance and reverb, and finishing your project. For this bassoon quartet, I have two or three takes of every part. I'll start by importing all the audio tracks and lining them up. Some of these takes you can see have a few false starts at the beginning. So now I'm just cutting those out. Same thing on this track. And then say I want to line these two up, it might help to zoom in a little bit. And I can see that I need to take something off this track. Remember to always cut from the beginning of the track, not anywhere in the middle. OK, I've lined everything up. And now it's time to pick the takes that I thought were the best. If I hadn't done this when I was recording, then I would listen through to each of these takes individually and decide now. Mute the takes you've rejected, but don't delete them quite yet. Listen to the whole piece and make notes of where things aren't lining up. It may be that one part is consistently behind. That's an easy fix, just chop off some more of the beginning. You'll also probably have individual moments where things aren't lined up quite right, and the solution for that is identifying which part is causing the problem and trying out your reject takes to see if that solves it. Usually overall alignment is more important than any small reasons you might have had for choosing one take over another. Another option is to do more advanced audio editing, to go between your two takes of each part to correct mistakes. That's what I've done here. If you have a great overall take with one small problem, you could splice in a few seconds of the other take to fix the problem. And if you're interested in that kind of editing, try finding a tutorial specific to the software that you're using. Once you have the parts aligned to your satisfaction, make sure the gain is still OK. Often it will start clipping when you combine the parts, even if each individual part was fine when you recorded. You'll be able to see here in this case and hear if this is a problem when you play it back. If you do need to adjust the gain, make sure you adjust the overall amplification of all the parts simultaneously. Like you did when you were recording, try to get it as loud as possible without clipping. Speaking of adjusting amplification, you might find that you need to adjust the balance between the parts slightly. In this case, I thought that I needed to make the first part overall a little louder. It's okay to do a little bit of amplifying or deamplifying, but keep in mind that it starts to sound unnatural pretty quickly. Now let's talk about reverb. Like fixing balance, it's easy for artificial reverb to make your playing sound unnatural. However, most home recording spaces are relatively dead, so you will need to add some reverb. Again, you want to do this to all the parts simultaneously. 
play around with these settings to find a tasteful amount. Unless you have specific demands for your project, you probably want about one to two seconds of silence at the beginning and end of the track. Cut all of them at the same time to achieve that. As a finishing touch, I like to add a fade in at the beginning and a fade out at the end. Just make sure that you're only editing the silent part of the tracks. And now you can export your file. I recommend exporting as a wave because it's higher quality than MP3. If this is for a video project, the last step is to line your audio track with each video you recorded. Popular free video editing software includes DaVinci Resolve, and if you have a Mac, iMovie is also great. There are already many tutorials on YouTube for those programs, so I'll leave it here. If you found this tutorial helpful, please let me know in the comments. I'll try to respond to questions as well. Good luck with your next multi-track recording project.